morning, everyone. Thanks for coming this morning. So I'm going to talk to you today about a project in MSF at the moment called the Multiplex Fever Diagnostic. I'm doing something wrong. There we go. So Viva represents about 50% of consultations uh, worldwide, and one of the most common reasons for admission to hospitals in low and, income, low and middle income countries is Viva. It's also responsible for high mortality and loss of life expectancy. So obviously a big impetus to work on fever as a, as a subject. There's about 10 million people per year in low and middle in income countries hospitalized with acute fever symptoms. And actually, although I've put there that MSF medical teams face approximately over 178,000 patients per year with difficult to diagnose fever, in fact, we don't really have good numbers on this because it's been impossible to measure. And so one of the reasons we want to work more on the diagnostic solutions for this is because it's really hard, well, difficult to diagnose fevers. And we need better numbers from our sites as well. Um, there's also a lack of microbiology labs, lack of the ability to diagnose the cause of fever. But there is a realization that we need to move from a syndromic to an etiological approach to, be, to better manage fevers. So a potential solution for this is a multiplex diagnostic platform whereby the instrument could uh, accept different cartridges to test different pathogens. Um, in this case, it would be, for example, a multiplex for 12 different pathogens on a single cartridge. But because it would be open source, it would also be able to accept cartridges made by any other manufacturer for any other purpose, any other disease. And of course, we also wanted to be affordable and robust. Um, at the moment, we um, would like for it to be able to test for biomarkers to uh, identify bacterial versus non-bacterial infections, to better be able to, to tell whether the patient needed antibiotics or not. We also wanted to detect fever-causing pathogens. This is a bit more difficult because obviously there's geographic variation, but there are some um, generally um, well accepted pathogens that would need to be on there. And finally, we probably also want the test to be able to measure antibiotic susceptibility. So there's a number of projects underway in this area. The multiplex is not the only one. For example, there's been quite a lot of work on rapid diagnostic tests and point of care tests. Um, probably the most work at the moment is being done on biomarker or biomarker signatures that can differentiate bacterial and non-bacterial pathogens. These are usually host biomarkers. Um, there's also initiatives to measure actual pathogens, uh, whether in single RDTs or multiplex. And then combinations of different um, types of RDTs, for example, a malaria RDT paired with a biomarker to differentiate bacteria and non-bacteria, uh, biomarkers paired with pathogen detection, and then host response signatures, which would, for example, measure the transcriptome, so you would see how the patient is responding to a pathogen for better clinical follow-up. And finally, severity markers to be able to triage patients better to see who needed uh, urgent referral. And some of these existing initiatives include the MSF's eCare, which is a panoramic fever diagnostic um, a, a technology that is run on a tablet. And Clotilde is here, I see she, she can tell you more about that. There's also the original Almanac that she worked on from the Swiss Tropical Institute, which has now become the EPOCT. Um, MSF and FIND also work together to bring out a target product profile for the biomarkers that in terms of the type of test we would want to see, it would be useful for MSF and, and feasible for us to do in the field. And finally, they also published a review of the biomarker, the performance of the biomarkers to distinguish bacteria and non-bacteria. Um, there's actually very few studies from resource limited settings for that though. A finder also uh, continuing with other work on rapid diagnostic tests. For example, they're working with ChemBio on a five pathogen test for fever causing pathogens in Southeast Asia. Uh, Okba working with the University of Toronto on severity markers. And finally, there's a range of prize funds, including from the NIH, the EU Horizon, and Longitudinal here in the UK. There's also the Minilab, which is an MSF OCP project, which aims to um, 
have a simplified feasible lab to miniaturize blood, blood culture and also bone culture. And that's underway already, and we hope to be able to validate it in MSF sites the end of next year. And finally, the multiplex, which um, is the, the least well-developed so far. We are undertaking six work streams to complete this preparation phase, which will probably take up until the end of next year. Um, these work streams will enable an informed decision about whether it be worth continuing with the full products or, um, or, or not. Uh, part of this landscaping work, which has been quite extensive, was a review of 440 companies to see which manufacturers of both the instrument and the cartridges would be aligned with MSF ambitions, and we have about 20 uh, at the moment. The methods. Um, the feasibility study that was done examined patient need, potential funding to bring the product to, to market, the technical requirements and the regulatory requirements. It being an open system, the regulatory requirements are slightly more complex than a closed system. And just a good analogy of that would be like your Nespresso for coffee, where you, you've got your Nespresso machine and you buy your cartridges from, uh, from the same store and, and pop them in, as opposed to going to another store and, and buying um, other generic cartridges, which you could run on the same machine. Um, and so we're trying to move away from the Nespresso monopolistic system to a more open system, more customizable, more flexible, and hopefully more competitive as well. And the target product profile has already, is already in draft form. It's, it's already been developed with input from MSF stakeholders and find. And interviews have been held with diagnostic companies to gauge their interest in bringing this product forward as well. Ethics. This innovation project did not involve human participants or the individual data, and the MSF, MSF ethics framework for innovation was applied to help identify and mitigate potential harms. The results so far, uh, the target product profile is available, but just to highlight some, uh, some variables from that, the intended use of the test would be for the detection or identification of priority pathogens and the ability to differentiate bacterial and non-bacterial infections in support of the diagnostic management of undifferentiated female febrile illness with sign of severity. The target use setting at a minimum would be for MSF referral facilities. So this is once you've ruled out malaria with an RDT um, and perhaps some other infections with available RDTs and you're still stuck as to what is causing the fever, so at a referral facility. And they would need to be a functional laboratory, trained personnel, water, electricity, limited climate control, and medical staff on site. Ideally, we would like to bring the test down to the primary level as well. Target population, all patients, uh, adults, children, HIV positive, malnourished, etc. cetera. Uh, and the system, importantly, would need to combine different technologies because based on the, um, the ability to detect the pathogen, uh, whether by molecular or serological means, so you either need to measure, depending on the kinetics, the pathogen itself or the immune response to the pathogen, uh, but also for the biomarker tests and, and other maybe um, antibiotic sensitivity testing or severity markers, it needs to be a platform able to measure different types of things by different techniques. The draft pathogen list so far uh, was developed via consultation with MSF experts and fine because we have very little good prevalence data to go on, whether within MSF or from other studies that have been done. Uh, this was mostly, mostly done based on expert opinion uh, and so needs to be honed a, a little more. Uh, it's also, you can see, includes both bacteria and viruses. Some are vaccine preventable, some are on the WHO uh, priority pathogen list already, so um, quite a, a spread geographically as well. Um, what is planned for the funding structure going ahead would be a milestone prize, so pool funding. Um, prizes have been quite popular in recent years to try and incentivize uh, manufacturers to work on a product that would meet the target product profile. Um, we estimate that the prize would be between 90 and 105 million R&D investment over six to eight years, and it would be a milestone prize, so three phases. In the first milestone, it would be for proof of concept. So 
the concept being that you would be able to individually measure the pathogens and demonstrate that the platform technology can detect each of the pathogens identified in the TPP. This would be years zero to three, five to six awards of 78 million, capped at 40 million. At the second milestone, it would be a prototype built through initial clinical evaluation to demonstrate that the prototype meets the minimal requirements in the TPP. Years four to six, two to three awards at five to six million dollars, capped to 20 million. And finally, the end price for regulatory approval and field validation. And this would be to demonstrate the clinical validation in the field. So at first MSF field sites, but others as well and to fulfill the minimal requirements in the TPP. Um, and this would be year A, one award for 40 million. Uh, so in conclusion, based on the landscaping work done, there, it does seem to be feasible to develop this product. There's a convincing business case for the project that meets MSF needs, which is not always uh, easy. Um, and the partnership with outside organizations are essential. The next steps, um, they, we've had, we have an agreement with the WHO to take the target product pro profile forward in a consensus process. So through the WHO, which is a normative body, we will finalize the target product profile, including the need to add on antibiotic resistance testing or not, and prioritization of the pathogen list, so finalizing the pathogen list. Um, we'll also have a menu of test cartridges defined to be able to sustain the market and with the geographic variation. We'll define how the multiplex will change clinical practice and improve patient care. So importantly, this test is used as part of a clinical algorithm and a diagnostic workup. So uh, a lot of work is going into um, defining how this test would actually be used as part of a clinical algorithm for fever. And finally, compiling data points for the final decision making on moving forward with the program or not after this, um, after these work streams have been completed. Uh, and so at the moment, the, the project is hosted by MSF USA, who are um, undertaking these work streams. Um, so I'd just like to acknowledge everyone who's been involved in this. It's been for the, at least the last two years. Um, and uh, that includes many people from MSF. And we've also worked with outside organizations um, to get the project to this point so far. Thank you.